In 2005, I was working at the LA Conservancy and I organized um, a project called Curating the City. And it was focused on Wilshire Boulevard. And part of its reason for being, well, in my mind at least, the organization um, had you know, larger goals for the project. But part of its reason for being was to help build what at the time we were calling a preservation ethos trying to get people to think about their heritage, not necessarily in terms of where they came from originally, but rather where they lived, or where they circulated, or where they visited, or, or the places they remembered, in terms of the built environment. Um, and so we did a project that was um, focused on Wilshire from the beginning downtown all the way to the beach, so 16 miles in three different cities. Um, so uh, th this idea of drawing attention by putting a frame around a particular portion of the city was kind of fundamental to the project. And because it was focused on Wilshire Boulevard, it went directly past the Ambassador Hotel, which at the time was still standing and was one of the Conservancy's um, longest running preservation battles. It went on for, you know, I, the Conservancy was involved for at least um, a dozen years but issues around that site um, predated even the Conservancy's involvement. Um, and so I had always been aware of those battles over the ambassador because when I first came to Los Angeles in 19, came to LA in 1983, I want to say, yeah, 1983, and I worked for the Museum of Contemporary Art for a long time. But, you know, Wilshire was just one of those places that, you know, most people circulate through a lot, and it was a little bit, it was a little bit, Wilshire Center was, um, was not yet Koreatown. Koreatown was around Olympic. Um, but there were a great number of fantastically seedy bars on Wilshire, um, including the HMS Bounty across the street from the Ambassador. Um, so, you know, there was plenty to do. Anyway, um, but when I was in LA, there was a fire sale for the ambassador because it was closing um, and it wasn't going to be utilized any longer as a really, really rundown hotel. In fact, it hadn't been operated, it was closed already, but they still had stuff in it. And so, as part of a sale, and I've forgotten which iteration of sale that was, they were getting rid of everything that was inside. And it was just a great excuse for a lot of people to just go onto the grounds and walk around. So some people who were there were really trying to make money by buying stuff that had value, but of course I had no money. I was just there for, you know, my, you know, for nostalgia. And so I ended up buying two lamps that probably were in a fairly recent era of hotel, um, uh, of the hotel business because, you know, they, they're not particularly valuable as, you know, they're not from the 20s when the ambassador was built or anything like that. They're um, kind of chipped Grecian sculptures turned into lamps without lampshades, you know, little chipped and there's a man and there's a woman. And it just, you know, it sort of cracks me up that, you know, this would have been, like the, these were the markers, excuse me, of, um, of the glamour of the ambassador hotel. Right, because they were really, they're kind of forlorn, you know? <laughs> they're just these, you know, these sad busts. Um, but you know, I really love them because they, you know, they are a piece of living history.